De regreso aquí en Auto 060 en el especial del Porsche 918 Spider desde el circuito de las Américas en Austin, Texas. Y en este segmento vamos a hablar con nuestro colega Peter Valdez de Pena de CNNMoney.com con quien compartimos parte de la experiencia ahí manejando tanto en la pista como fuera de ella. Y bueno, con Peter vamos a hablar un poco sobre no solamente este auto, sino en general el mercado de los autos de super lujo en el mundo que parece que está en una gran explosión. So now hi with Peter Valdez uh, Depena from CNN uh, Money uh, dot com and uh, we just uh, off uh, driving the 919 uh, Spider of the roads, which uh, is an amazing thing because that car is uh, I mean it's fantastic on the track and super fast. So what what's what your impressions in general about the car? I mean in general it's one of the coolest cars I've ever driven. I mean one of the things that really struck me about it. I mean obviously the the performance capabilities are certainly way beyond what I could even begin to touch what this car could do. Uh, I got some idea when we went out, uh, when I went out riding with a professional driver, he'd set a Norberg ring record. <laughs> and this car just corners incredibly. It takes off like a beast. But the thing I really love is the, the way it sounds. It sounds different from any other car I've ever driven. You know, at times it can sound almost like a Toyota Prius or a regular hybrid when you're yeah. running under electric mode. Yeah. It's quiet. You know, it starts to wind up, and then when that gasoline engine kicks in, it kicks in with a roar. I mean, yeah. it's not just a gentle sound. It, it startles you the first time it happens, but it's, it's really striking. It's got such a rumble to it. Mm -hmm. And there's just so much incredible power in this thing. Yeah, 887 horsepower total, I think uh, it is, uh, about 600 and some, and 60 with the V8 engine, right? Uh, 608 from the eight, V8, eight, eight, yeah. 608 just from the V8 engine alone. I mean, that by itself would be <laughs> incredible. Car, yeah. That's more than a 911 Turbo S, exactly. you know. That's an awesome car. Even without adding in the front and back electric motors, it bring it up to 887 yeah. horsepower. With all-wheel drive, because you have a separate electric motor for the front wheels, and this thing, it, it's a beast. But it's actually a, a pretty tame beast. I mean, you can, yeah. you can handle it. I did not feel You, you like, don't feel scared, right? It's not it, scary. Yeah. I mean, I could, took this thing around the track. It was not scary. It was not difficult. The only hard part was holding myself in the seat around the corners <laughs> yeah. because, you know, going around these turns, it's just pulling you to the outside. The car holds on tight. It corners flat. Yeah. But there's just so much force no, and power. You're you driven pretty much everything that it's out there. Like, and, and right now, I would say, I mean, at least my opinion, I, I want to hear yours. This is probably one of the one, two, or three best cars there are out there right now, right? Maybe the McLaren, the B1. And sure. Like maybe... I mean, I think in this class, it's a really, really interesting time. I love covering the auto industry right now. Yeah. It's such an interesting time. Because a super performance plug-in hybrid sounds crazy except okay porsche's got one for eight hundred forty five thousand dollars ferrari's doing one the ferrari la ferrari for over a million dollars mclaren's doing a high performance plug-in car everybody's doing these things because it and it's clear from talking to the people at porsche it's not just for show they're doing this because hybridization is going to be a part of performance cars from here on in because it just makes them better It makes them not just more efficient, but more powerful. You can do more things with electric motors than you can do with just a gasoline engine. Not like the gasoline engine is going to go away. Exactly. But, but this it, kind of augmentation is, going to, is here to stay. And, and then maybe um, we in the media, uh, I'm not blaming you directly, but like in general, I think, uh, some people give them like bad rap for uh, hybrid cars. They're not fun. They're not like cool. Or, uh, but well, this is like the complete extreme of that. It's not a bad rap. It's, it's kind of the way hybrid cars have been. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. I think the Toyota Prius is a great car. It's practical. It's fuel efficient. Fun? Not even close. It's not <laughs> no. fun. It's not what hybrids have been about. This shows you that, look, hybrids are a performance feature. Anything that makes a car more efficient can also make it more fun. It depends on how you want to apply that efficiency. If you apply that efficiency to getting the most power and getting the most performance, then that's what you're going to get. You're going to get something like this that's just going to blow you away. So uh, in terms of uh, people who are always suspecting uh, that, that they're not know what they're going to get in a car like this, And also that those traditionalists, like especially with Porsche, which is like a brand that they didn't like the, the Cayenne at the beginning. They didn't like the McLaren, yes. the, um, the, um, the Panamera, I'm sorry. 
And uh, but so there's some people that are going to say like, "What an electric uh, Porsche? I don't want that." Well, there was a time when there was a time not that long ago when I interviewed the, some of the top executives of Porsche, and they said, uh, "You know, hybrid sports car not going to happen because it's the hybridization. It adds weight, it adds extra packaging in the car. It's just not really. It's not. The, it's not what people are looking for in a Porsche. But clearly, they've discovered that you know what? There is a way." that we can do this, that we can put this technology into a sports car, make it handle really well, make it accelerate really well, and by the way, it gets, you know, 67 miles a gallon equivalent. Exactly. And so 0 to 60 in 2.9 seconds or something like 2. that. 2.5 seconds. seconds yeah. I mean, this thing goes 0 to 60 in almost less time than it takes to say 0 <laughs> exactly. to 60. It's amazing. But an interesting story also behind the scenes uh, with Dr. Frank Ballister, the head of, uh, of the program, that they started this program like kind of a quarter of their spare time, almost like with no authorization from Porsche, and then they show it, and then they convince them too, right? Yeah. It's, it's pretty we, incredible. That you can sell people, because it's part of the idea. It, it, is, it is a big step. It's something that's absolutely necessary, but it is a big step for a brand like Porsche to say, you know what, we can have hybrids, and we can make them exciting and fun. You know, and Porsche's had hybrids before. We've had hybrid Cayennes, yeah. hybrid Panamera. This is the next step. It's a plug-in hybrid. Now they've also got the plug-in hybrid Panamera. And, you, you know, Porsche knows with a brand like theirs, Porsche is a very, very profitable car brand because they have so much equity and people believe mm-hmm. in that brand, exactly. they understand that brand. You don't want to mess with that. You don't want to risk people saying, you know what, they're not serious about performance anymore. So if you've got to come out with your first plug-in hybrid, you want to make it something that's just going to be in So in, in, that, in that sense, might be, might, to some people might sound risky, but it, it really isn't. I mean, because the result of this car, the, the, the final product is amazing, right? The final product is amazing. It's certainly not a car that everybody can afford. It's a car that very, <laughs> very few people can afford. But it's not about that. I think it's about showing the capability. And I guarantee you they're going to have no trouble selling all 918 of these cars. Yeah, 918. They're producing for 845,000, I think, is the starting price. The starting price. And we're talking about Porsche (laughs) here. So you know those (laughs) options are going to be getting. Yeah, you know. And especially with these kind of cars, uh, there are going to be a lot of people who want to do, like, I'm not going to say crazy, but some very different things and and wild things. Right. right? You can buy a $20,000 fitted luggage set. There is one paint color, the dark blue paint color. It's a sixty-nine thousand dollar paint yeah. option on this car. You know, you could buy cars for what the options on this car cost. Exactly. So, but still, you're going to have plenty of people out there that are going to be lining up to buy one. Of these. And speaking about that that, that segment, the ultra luxury, uh, high performance segment. Um, it's crazy, no? I mean, like, I mean, where's this money coming from? Because I think the Lamb- Lamborghini Huracan sold 1,000 units before they show it at the Geneva right. Auto Show, and uh, like, they cannot make enough of them. It seems it's it's a crazy, it's a crazy, and that's a car that's replacing their most popular model, and it's obviously going to be really popular, but it costs you know over yeah. well over hundred thousand dollars. The where the money is coming from is when I've talked to these car companies about this, and it's. It's it's who you'd think. It's it's celebrities, it's yeah. sports stars, it's big time investors. There are enough people out there that have this kind of money. The thing is people that have this kind of money aren't buying just one car. Oh yeah. They're buying this is not gonna be the only car in somebody's garage. You're not going to pick up groceries in a nine eighteen spider. This is <laughs> gonna be in there with all, with probably other Porsches, with a Lamborghini, with a Ferrari. When all these plug-in hybrids come out, I bet you there's going to be some electric car fans, probably out in California, they're going to have yeah. one of each. Absolutely. And maybe I heard, like, I don't know if it's true, but, like, some people are buying one or two or three of these because this is going to be a collection of items in, oh, the, in that sense, too, right? I mean, this is, in I five, ten years, this car is going to be, this car is going to be worth uh, millions. Yeah, depreciation on this car is going to be negligible, exactly. if anything. I mean, it's probably going to go up in value, maybe not right away, but over time, this car absolutely will be... I guarantee you, worth over a million dollars in the future. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing your ex- your uh, experience with us here, and uh, great. And um, we'll uh, check your stuff on CNNMoney.com, right? Great. I'll have a whole write up and a video and all that too. Excellent. And everything else. All thank right. you, Peter. Nice Thanks to meet you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Este programa fue una producción de National Latino Broadcasting. 